let's learn about spa not this one the sequent peak algorithm but first we have a guest meet john he wants to design the storage tank for his house he listed the supply of water and the daily uses over a period of a week he decided to use a large temporary storage tank and check the maximum amount of water that needs to be taken out on a single day till the pattern starts to repeat itself on doing this he find out the minimum volume of storage tank to be 3 units you must be thinking what's so special about this basically he created a miniature reservoir with the supplies inflow and the uses as required release the method he used to find the size of the storage tank is in fact known as the sequent peak algorithm before we get into sequent peak algorithm let's discuss the types of storage is in a reservoir a reservoir storage consists of dead storage which is also called inactive storage then second is flood control storage third surcharge storage and the last is active storage which is a useful one sequent peak algorithm is a technique designed primarily to estimate the size of active storage by tracking the inflows and outflows over an interval so what is an inflow inflow is the water that the reservoir receives from a river groundwater flow or in form of rainfall and the outflow is the water that the reservoir loses in the form of demands to fulfill the loss uh, that occurs during the evaporation and some other minor losses by definition sequent peak algorithm says that the minimum storage capacity that is required for a reservoir to have is equal to the maximum of the deficit that occurs in a streak during a given period if you have the data of inflows and outflows over a period of n years and if someone prompts to estimate the size of reservoir based on this data then what will you do you will first of all assume that this data follows a cyclic progression so the pattern of the data will not vary over the next 10 years it will be same over the next 10 years and another next 10 years and so on the pattern won't change and the second assumption says that before the beginning of dry season or dry period the reservoir storage is assumed to be full so now let us begin the graphical approach of analyzing the data so the first step in the graphical approach is to calculate and plot the cumulative net flow volume versus time so cumulative net flow is the value of inflow minus outflow for given interval and you have to plot this value against a given period of 2 n years so say if you have inflow and outflow data for 12 months so you will calculate q1 minus as r1 that is the inflow minus outflow for the first month same similarly second month up till a period of 24 months and then you will plot this value over 24 months now you will observe one thing after plotting is that there will be sequence of peaks and troughs that are occurring in the data peaks indicate that the value of cumulative net flow is the greatest in that given period in that given small interval so now you will locate the first peak p1 that is occurring and then the next sequence peak p2 which is of magnitude greater than p1 and then p3 which is of magnitude greater than p2 and p1 and so on so after we have identified the peaks that are the maximum possible values of cumulative net flow in a given small interval the next job is to identify the minimum possible value of cumulative net flow which are called troughs so you will see from this graph that the first trough is occurring between the first two peaks p1 and p2 and we will call this trough as t1 now the second trough t2 is occurring between p2 and p3 and say that you have j number of peaks so p1 p2 p3 up to pj then you will have j number of troughs also t1 t2 up to tj and now after you identified the peaks and troughs your next job is to calculate the difference between these two and between the consecutive peaks and troughs so p1 minus t1 then next is p2 minus t2 and up to pj minus tj and then you will say that the minimum capacity minimum storage capacity that a reservoir should have is equal to the maximum of this difference so say that p5 minus t5 is maximum out of all of these differences then the minimum capacity that the reservoir should have should be greater than p5 minus t5 now why this let us understand 
so as you can see from the graph the cumulative volume is increasing till first peak then it's decreasing till the period of trough and then again it's increasing so what this means is that the net flow that is inflow minus outflow was positive till the period uh, till the time where first peak occurred and then the net flow became negative which resulted in decreasing the cumulative volume and the net flow was negative from the period of first peak to trough so now we call this period this period as drought period or critical period and in this critical period we will sum all the negative values of net flows and we will call this as the deficit that occurred during the drought period so what this deficit is indicating is that the demand that was there was not getting fulfilled from the inflow that was occurring and hence the demand was extracting the water from the storage of the reservoir and so it was reducing the level of water in the reservoir apart from the inflow and now if i were to successfully uh, satisfy this demand then the water in my reservoir should be greater than the deficit that is occurring in this technical approach you assume the value of k0 which is the deficit initially to be zero because the reservoir is assumed to be full capacity before the beginning of dry period the value on the rhs which is the, the deficit that occurred during the t minus 1th period plus the difference between the release and inflow of the tth period if this value is positive it indicates that again there is deficit occurring in the tth period and if this value is zero or negative it indicates that the all the demands that are occurring during the tth period are getting fulfilled from the inflow and you don't need to expel down the storage water in order to fulfill the demands and now again what we have to do we have to calculate the maximum value of kt that occurs in a given period of 2n years the minimum storage of the reservoir should be greater than or equal to the maximum value of the kt that occurs and the maximum value of the kt is nothing but maximum deficit that occurs and so this is the way we use sequent peak algorithm to estimate the size of reservoir storage so in this example we are given with the value of inflows and outflows for a period of 12 months from june to may now we have assumed that this data follows cyclic progression over another year and so we have calculated the net flow and cumulative net flow over the period of 24 months as you can see now if you observe then the month of june and july the net flow is becoming negative in this month so this is the first drought period that is occurring and the value of deficit in this drought period is the summation of both these net flows that is the first deficit that is occurring and another deficit is occurring from the month of january till the month of july because we are again getting the value of net flows to be negative in consecutive order and the next value of deficit is the summation of all these values that i am marking and similarly one more drought is occurring at the end of the second cycle from the month of march till may but if you observe you will see that the drought which is occurring in between from january till july is the most severe one and its deficit is the highest magnitude among all three so you will say that the size of my reservoir should be able to fulfill water demands during this deficit and and the size should be greater than the summation of all these negative values that is there which is nothing but the difference between the peak p1 the trough t1 which is occurring which we can check easily by calculation the first problem make a table to solve for the minimum storage capacity of the tanker in john's case and confirm his results now we can clearly see that the answer comes out to be 3 